Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 38 of the chapter hydrocarbons. In this video, I'm now going to introduce the next category of hydrocarbons that is aromatic hydrocarbons to you. Till now, in this chapter, we have studied about alkanes, about alkenes and alkynes. All of them are straight chain hydrocarbons which may be saturated or unsaturated. Aromatic hydrocarbons, on the other hand, are cyclic in nature, they are highly unsaturated and their behavior is very different from aliphatic or straight chain hydrocarbons. And that is why a separate class of compounds has been made which are called aromatic hydrocarbons. As the name suggests, something is aromatic. When I say that something is aromatic, it means it has a fragrance. So the aroma of the food is very good. So aroma is fragrance, the aroma of flowers, the, uh, the aroma of the perfumes that you're using, all of them, they, they are aromatic. So aromatic hydrocarbons, as the name suggests, are hydrocarbons which, are, uh, which usually have a smell or a fragrance in them. Aroma is a Greek word and that is the reason it is the term has been used from that Greek word aroma. So aromatic hydrocarbons are those which have an aroma. They are highly unsaturated, they are cyclic compounds and they behave differently from aliphatic hydrocarbons. And due to their being known as aromatic hydrocarbons, a name, an additional name is given to them which is arenes. They are also known as arenes. If you look at the structure of benzene, benzene is the simplest aromatic hydrocarbon. And if you look at this, it is it consists of six carbon atoms and in the six carbon atoms, it has alternating double bonds. So it is highly unsaturated. One double bond, one single bond, double, single, double, single. It has alternating double bonds and single bonds. Therefore, it is highly unsaturated. It is a six carbon ring. It is highly unsaturated. But how is it different from aliphatic hydrocarbons is, if you remember, when I taught you about alkenes and alkynes, I told you that they show addition reactions and they show addition reactions because they have, a, uh, they have multiple bonds. They have pi electrons and the pi electrons are not so strongly bound. That's the reason why the pi bonds usually very easily break and the addition reaction takes place. In the case of aromatic hydrocarbons, it has been found that although they are so unsaturated, in their chemical reactions, the unsaturation is not disturbed. In other words, these pi electrons, for some reason, they do not break, they do not dangle with every carbon to add on more species to them. So, the, for some reason, which I'll explain as we do the chapter further, you will understand why uh, the unsaturation in the case of aromatic hydrocarbons is not available, is not easily breakable. So, benzene is highly unsaturated, but in reactions, the unsaturation of benzene is retained. In other words, when the reaction takes place, the unsaturation remains as such. The three uh, double bonds, they remain undisturbed. They do not break, they do not cause, they do not undergo any change. So aromatic hydrocarbons are classified into two categories, benzenoid hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons and non-benzenoid. So any hydrocarbon, uh, aromatic hydrocarbon, which has a benzene ring in it is known as a benzenoid uh, aromatic hydrocarbon. Most, the majority of hydrocarbons are benzenoid hydrocarbons. And the other category is non-benzenoid. So what is benzene? Benzene is a six carbon ring with three double bonds in it, alternating double bonds in it. So any hydrocarbon, if you even if you look at this, you know, you will see that this has benzene. This has the benzene ring to which CH3 has been attached. So this compound is known as toluene. These are two benzene rings which are fused together along two carbon atoms. If you really look, this is a benzene, this is a benzene. They fused together. So they fuse together at these two carbon atoms. So this is nethylene. Look here, biphenyl. These are two benzene rings which are joined together by a single bond between the two carbon atoms. So the two hydrogens which may have been attached, they are removed. And the two benzene rings, the two carbons of the benzene ring, they get attached by a single bond. So each of these carbons that is here is attached to a hydrogen. 
because every carbon is tetravalent. So if this is a carbon and hydrogen, the carbon here is forming one bond with hydrogen, one bond with this carbon, two bonds with this carbon. So every carbon forms four bonds. So this is biphenyl. This also has benzene rings which are joined together by a bond. But if you look at this compound, now pyridine. Pyridine it has got six atoms in the ring, but one of them is not carbon. So it is different from benzene. In benzene is a carbon ring, but in this it's a ring. It is a ring structure. It has six uh, members of the ring, but one of them instead of being carbon is nitrogen. So this is called pyridine and pyridine therefore is a non-benzenoid hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbons can be, or aromatic hydrocarbons can be classified into two categories, benzenoid and non-benzenoid aromatic hydrocarbons. Now we come to the nomenclature and isomerism. In unit 12, where we introduced organic chemistry to you, organic chemistry, some basic principles and techniques. In this chapter, we have done the nomenclature and isomerism has been explained to you to a great extent. So I would encourage you to watch the videos of that chapter. If you uh, find it difficult, because we are, I'm not going to be repeating all of that. We are just going to move ahead, assuming that you already know it. So I would encourage you to watch chapter 12, watch the basic principles and techniques, and then uh, do chapter hydrocarbons. So in nomenclature and isomerism, it is important for us to remember just a few things, just to I mean, I just would like to reiterate these. All the six carbons in benzene. Benzene is a very symmetrical structure. It's a planar structure. All six carbons are identical. All of them are attached to one hydrogen, two carbons on one, uh, two bonds to one carbon and one bond to the other neighboring carbon. Each carbon has the same uh, arrangement. So all of all the carbons are identical. They are absolutely the same. So if any atom, like in this case, you see this toluene. If CH3 comes and attaches itself to this carbon or CH3 comes and attaches itself to this carbon, if I assume this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5 and carbon 6, CH3 could be attached to any of the carbons. You would still, when you look at it, it will look the same. You will, and when you are giving the IUPAC nomenclature, that carbon which has the methyl group attached to it would be the first carbon and therefore it would be one methyl benzene or the other name for it is toluene which is also accepted in IUPAC nomenclature although it was initially the uh, the common name for it but IUPAC nomenclature has accepted toluene so this is toluene and all the carbons they are identical so whenever you have a mono substituted benzene it will not have it will have one structure only because that uh, substituted um, species or um, group could be attached to any carbon and all of them being identical you can't tell them apart. So all six carbons of benzene are equivalent they are the same. So it forms only one type of so it forms only one time of, type of mono substituted product. Wherever you have a product where there's only one substitution it will be identical. But for di substituted benzene but if two of the carbons are being substituted in benzene, then you can have three isomeric forms of that di-substituted product. What would be the three isomeric, what are the three possibilities? So for, um, for di-substituted benzene, where two hydrogens are replaced by similar or different monovalent atoms or groups, three position isomers are possible. Imagine these are six identical um, carbons. So if you have two groups, two methyl groups attached, one, two, dimethyl benzene, this is, all right, one, two, dimethyl benzene. It is possible, you will always name one of the substitutions as the first carbon. So it is possible that one methyl group is attached to the first carbon and the second methyl group is attached to the third carbon. So you get one, three. So you get one, three, dimethyl benzene. The third possibility is 1,4-dimethylbenzene. That benzene, the two uh, methyl groups are attached to the first and the fourth carbon. If now I move this methyl group to this carbon, then I will not, according to 
the long uh, the what the locant lowest locant rule you will now start counting from this side so this will be the first carbon and this will be the third carbon so you will call it 13 dimethyl benzene which will be identical to this and if the methyl group is attached here you will again call it 12 dimethyl benzene because you will now count from the other side so there are only three possible position isomers the first is where the substitution is on the first and second carbon the second is where the substitution is on the first and the third carbon and the third is where substitution is on the first and the fourth carbon now we do understand that these three position isomers are possible but there is a term that is used for each of these which is be very commonly used when you study organic chemistry one two substitution is known as ortho substitution so it is ortho ortho means the substitution is on one and two carbon atoms and the name is the common name for this compound is xylene so this is ortho xylene if the substitution is on the first and the third carbon it is called meta meta is a medium one not the facebook meta so one and three so that is uh, one and three would be meta xylene and 1 for substitution would be para xylene ortho meta and para now remember these terms that is ortho meta and para although you will be reading it a lot and you will be using it a lot this is common nomenclature it is not iupac nomenclature this is written in common nomenclature yet it is very very commonly used and therefore it is important for you to know what ortho meta and para substitutions are ortho substitution is neighboring 1 2 meta is 1 3 and para is 1 4 and there are only three possible position isomers for di substituted benzene rings all right so this was the introduction and in the next uh, video we are going to study about the structure of benzene so if you um, want to watch other videos in this chapter of this chapter you can click the link that appears on the top of your uh, video and with this i wrap up today's video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now